the 700. Welcome to another Whipper Snappers Amateur Show brought to you by Stay Young. Today we're catching up with Jadon Cooper. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Just very blessed to have this opportunity to be able to talk with you. Doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Great. These uh, these days where I get to do podcasts and uh, and talk moto most of the day, I, I love it, man. So it's a, <laughs> uh, it's a uh, project of passion for me, this podcast, more than anything else. I, uh, I absolutely love it. I could, I could talk moto all day. So 100%. it's always a good day when that's happening, yeah. <laughs> always always cool man so i've uh i've seen that you're uh you qualified for the redders man so congratulations on that two classes man so you're right into the swing of uh your loretta's prep and training and all that so just yeah just tell us a bit about what's been happening lately yes sir i'm actually qualified in open pro sport and college boy at sunset ridge about a week ago and um i've been up at kevin windham's farm 14 and getting some great training in with Kevin. You know, he's very, very knowledgeable in the sport, obviously, you know, so much. And um, Kyle Swanson, also a great, great coach and also a very great rider. He also um, rides with us sometimes and just learning as much as I can. We have a great group of riders here and um, just a lot to feed off of and just trying to stay healthy and just learn as much as we can every day so that way we can bring our best foot forward into the ranch this year. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're you're probably too young to to realize how awesome it is to be uh, training with Kevin. But I bet I bet your mum and dad have told you how awesome it is, though. You know, actually, my mom and dad they weren't into moto at all. It kind of weirdly um happened. It was kind of random. I'm the only person in my family to do it because my dad used to race street bikes. But um, just growing up, um. Kevin was actually my mom's favorite rider, like, growing up. Every Supercross, you know, that my dad and mom took me to, um, we always was rooting for Kevin. And it's um, it's actually very surreal to be training with him and, you know, kind of build the relationship that we have together. And it's um, it's very surreal. And I just, just get wild and just amazed every day by how much he knows. And just he's also a great human being. And um, just being around him is great all the time. And just he's very good with working with you and, I love it every single day, just training with him, learning as much as I can. Yeah, yeah, he's oh, he's one of my favorites. He's one of he's one of everyone's favorites. I think he's oh, just yeah. one of those guys. And just and like you said, just uh, a really good human being as well as an okay. awesome rider. So yeah, for sure, yes, sir. Well, without a doubt, he's a great, great person, great role model for the sport for sure. Cool, man. Cool. So you're going to do Open Pro and College Boy, is that right? At at Loretta's? yes, sir. Yes, sir. Open pro and college boy this year, dude. Your um, your uh, Loretta's career so far, career is, doesn't sound right, but your your Loretta's <laughs> journey so far, the journey, yeah, it's, it was a very sort of um, me, um, meteoric. Uh, is that the right word? Meteoric rise, like you were sort of yeah. um, you were like uh, struggling, struggling in C grade, and then a few years <laughs> later, you're like winning four fifty B, like. Dude, just yeah. tell us a bit about all that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was definitely a roller coaster of emotions and everything, but I always put my faith in God first and know that um, anything is possible with him. And that really showed me because it took me five years just to make it to the ranch for my very first time. I missed it five years in a row, came up short. Um, a lot of times I didn't even come up short. But I remember one year I got an um, email. My mom got an email from MX Sports saying that I will potentially be an alternate. It was for mini senior. And I remember I went and um, I was so happy, started doing my 20 minute moto, stuff like that, yada, yada, yada. And I got on the gate and um, yeah, because the other people didn't show up, it was one on one and I was about to race, but they watered the track at Loretta's every single moto. So that gave the other riders that didn't show up yet a lot more time to show up. And I remember before the site lap, I got a tap on my shoulder when I was lined up, about to go race the one of my dream, my dream scenario, just to be able to make race the ranch. And I got pulled off and that just lit a fire up under me ever since. And I just worked super, super hard. And um, yeah, this year, actually, I made it in 2017 for my first time in C class. And my mother scores were like 12, 11, 8 for fourth overall somehow. So that was pretty cool. And then I remember I, in 2018, I tried and didn't make it. It was my first year at B. And um, 
I went in schoolboy as an alternate and got 12th in schoolboy two. And this, yeah, this year, I've only been like three times. And this year, whenever I went, last year, 2023, I won. And it was just um, very surreal. I just know I worked super, super hard. And like I said, always kept my faith in God and had a very great group of people supported me, especially with my parents. You know, they grind so hard. And um, yeah, it was just a long time coming. And actually, my old trainer, Andrew Pierce, He's like family to me. He's helped me so much growing up and always told me that one day I could do it. And, you know, I didn't like just believe him like that because the dream was so far away. But winning Loretta just actually shows me that anything is possible as long as you put your mind to it and you um, have the faith in, in God and the right person. So definitely um, surreal. I still sometimes I walk in my room, see the plate on my wall and can't even believe it. It's just it's crazy. I love it, man. I love it. One thing about me and my shows, man, is like my – I'm here for the stories. I love the stories, yeah. man. And that's for a good sure. one. That's a good one. Like I'm 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 never gonna be a media guy. I don't care about breaking news and rumors or or uh, anything like that. I like the stories of the people and the success uh-huh. stories, and I especially like the stories when it's involves like hard work and dedication, man. So yeah, well done, man. That that's a really cool Thank one. You so yeah. much. That means a lot. Thanks so much. And, um, yeah, it was a lot of work. And there was one point in time before Loretta's, I remember I started working so hard. And I've said this before, but I rode 21 days straight in a row just trying to build my craft, build my craft. And I just worked as hard as I could and went to the race and just was like, I'm going to put my best foot forward and just try to apply the work that I have been doing and not set any expectations, any goals. And it just came out like that. And I'm just very grateful for it. So yeah, it's something that would definitely, I would take to my grave with me. It's just, it's a lifelong dream for sure. Cool, man. Tell us a bit about, so you said that, uh, you said that dad was racing street bikes. Oh yeah. So yeah. Tell us about how you got into dirt bikes then. Like what was your first bike and how did all that come around? Okay. So my dad used to like drag race. Um, and he took my brothers and sisters to Nuclear Cowboys back then, which is kind of like Nitro Circus now, kind of the same thing. Yeah. And he took me one day, and I was very, very interested in it. And I was like, that looks cool, but I don't like the tricks. Like, I like the concept, but not the tricks. Like, I like how they're jumping and stuff like that. But backflips and stuff, I wasn't really <laughs> that cool with. And um, we turned TV on one day, just w- sw- switching through the um, motorsport channels. And um, Supercross was on. And I was like, that, that is it. That is it. And I remember for Christmas, my dad, he bought me like a bike from Walmart and a dirt bike, like a little dirt bike from Walmart, not motorized or anything really. And a like street bike, you know, electrical street bike and whatever like that. And he told me to pick which one I wanted on Christmas Day. And everybody in the family, my dad, everybody thought I was going to pick the street bike, but I picked the dirt bike. And I started riding behind the church um, just in a little field they had ever since then and just kind of went off from there. And, yeah, just I didn't really get serious about it until I was 15. And that's when I really started, you know, doing nationals and stuff like that. But beforehand, I was just riding really just for fun. You know, I just enjoyed it for what it was. Never really tried to take it serious to be a national champion or national rider or anything such as that but it just kind of went that way and i felt like that's what god wanted me to do and i just pursued it and i loved it with all my heart and yeah it just pretty much worked out that's pretty cool man that the church let you ride out in the back of the church you know yep. like that. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't think the churches in my town would be too keen if a kid was riding a motorbike around <laughs> so that's a pretty cool church man yeah for sure yeah, for yeah. sure yeah it's definitely cool that they let me do that that was definitely it was right across the street from my house actually i literally just pull out the neighborhood go straight across the street pull the bike out and just start riding so yeah yeah that's good man yeah yeah did so were you, were you did you see your dad drag race or was that like before before your time or? I, I did but i don't remember it i don't he took me to them but i don't remember it at all i was so young and yeah i don't remember it at all i just kind of i guess he was a thrill seeker in a way and i kind of followed his steps in that in that order i guess and yeah i like motorsports and he always just used to watch it on tv and actually my dad was really good at baseball and just did street racing for fun and yeah i don't really remember it but i just know i like it whenever i did see it for the first time and actually do remember so that's pretty cool cool man cool 
And I, uh, I, I've seen on Instagram there, um, the what's the team? I've written it down here, but yeah, the the team that's just started helping you out, the Husky team. Yes, yeah, sir. Tell us about those guys. Husqvarna, um, very, very, very great group of people. It is Josh, Josh Rogers. He owns um, the EBR team manager, and Daniel Blair is actually a huge part, a huge help, and Robert. And they're very, very great. And they um, actually sent me um, a text and a DM not too long ago, right before they signed me and wanted to help me out, giving me an opportunity to race Supercross Futures and Arena Cross, the Arena Cross USA Championship through 2026. And that really made me so, so happy just to know that I can actually do this as a job now. And it was kind of just, you know, something for fun as always, but to actually have this as a job and know that I can do this and support and myself and have a living doing this really makes me happy and know that I have that opportunity it just makes me more motivated it fuels that fire a little more and I'm just very very grateful for the people that have helped me and also my parents they have such a big part you know my mom she's the best mental coach I think ever she always helps me mentally she knows anytime I'll try to if I go to a race I used to go to races even now to this day, if I'm nervous, you know, I'll try to cover it up and mask it, act like I'm not nervous. And my mom would just pull me to the side and ask me what's going on. I'm like, how do you even know? And she's like, she just knows everything about me. It's just, it's crazy. And my dad, you know, he's always pumping me up saying like, you got this, you know, you've worked so hard, you got this. And my mom's helping me on the other side of things. So it's just a great group of people I have around me. And even my family's very supportive. And yeah, I'm just very grateful to be with the EBR Customer on Ajax team and just can't wait to pursue my goals and just keep doing the best that I can and learn as much as I can each and every day. Awesome, man. Yeah, you can't get anything past mums, man. Mums know everything. They know everything. They know everything. everything. Yes, sir. That is correct. That is correct. Cool, man. Cool. I didn't realize that uh, that DB was helping you out as well. That's uh, that's cool. Coincidence, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. So, yeah. That is, really? uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be happy to see that I've got you on the show. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah, he's a great, great guy. I've always um, looked up to to Daniel and, you know, just hearing him all the super crosses, even his pro career that he had was actually pretty insane. And he's just a great human human being. I remember the first time I got a podium at I don't know what race it was. It was one of the nationals and he told me good job. And I was just on cloud nine. I was like, wow, like Daniel Blair just told me good job that's an insane and then to have him text me and say that he's you know super excited to be working with me and growing with the um program and stuff like that is actually surreal you know it doesn't even feel real to just show that um yeah like i said just hard work and dedication just takes you a long long way especially faith and um yeah I ended up working out and now i look forward to building a relationship with db or daniel and um yeah just growing it and i'm very very excited couldn't be more more pumped Cool, man. Cool. Seems as though we're talking about the Blairs, I might use it as a segue for the for the ad read. So uh, this T-shirt I'm wearing, can you see that? I do. I do see it. I see you that. recognize the brand. The yeah, yeah. Stay young, man. So stay young. This is my favorite T-shirt. <laughs> it's a stay young T-shirt. And stay young is uh, is a, uh, a supporter of this show. And the uh, really? so stay young, stay young is a uh, is a uh, gear brand owned by evan blair and uh yeah it started off as a kid's brand with kid size clothes but now that uh evan's grown the brand has grown and uh drop 2.0 yeah. is here and it is absolute fire man uh now they have sizes from uh you small through to xxl um there's a heap of different colorways uh there's also some new t-shirts they still have the uh still have those sweet hoodies uh stayyoungmx.com mm -hmm. is the website that's really easy to remember. Stayyoungmx.com. So, yes, uh, yeah, get around it. Definitely got to give me some merch for sure. 100% got to support the cause. He's a great human being, and I'm sure he has obviously very good-looking clothing, clothing brand. So I definitely have to give me something to um, have my style up around walking, the, walking around the track and stuff like that at the events. That's it, man. I oh, know you're, you're sponsored by FTA. Is that right? Yes, sir. I am sponsored by FTA and just recently actually um, on the team I'm um, going through with new stuff. I'm actually supposed to be going with O'Neill here soon. 
supposed to be um, transferring to O'Neill. And FDA, they've helped me out so much, so, so much. I um, can't thank them enough. They have gave me all, you know, the sick um, clothing, streetwear, hats, hoodies, everything. They've helped me out so much. And just an amazing brand, amazing people. I actually had Brad. Um, Barons helped me out and Andy White helped me out and they're just great people and yeah I can't thank them enough and I'm very you know glad that we came to an understanding that you know just I guess it's kind of had to happen with the team deal and the team sponsors and stuff like that so just they've um, accepted and wished me well um, moving forward into the future and I can't thank them enough for that so cool man so on to O'Neill now so I raise hooking you up Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On the O'Neill. But the thing is, I don't know when this is coming out. It hasn't been announced yet. I don't think I'm supposed to be announcing it until, I think, Monday. I think Monday or maybe tomorrow. It depends. I'm supposed to have my gear tomorrow. So either tomorrow or Monday, I'll make a post about it. And then that's when it'll be, you know, actually official and stuff like that. Kind of just kept it under the rug a little bit. So it's been going like that. Cool, man. No worries, man. Who else is helping you out? Obviously, the um, EBR Ajax Husqvarna crew has been helping me a lot, a lot um, here lately. Kevin Windham, Kyle Swanson at Farm 14. Um, my mom and dad, they've helped me an uh, absolute ton. And really just my family a whole lot and even have some friends help me out. Actually, one of my best friends, Hayden Crimes and Jeff Crimes' his dad, they've helped me so much um just really get on my feet and just keep going helping me pursue my dream you know when i didn't have a ride and it was you know harder to get to the races or harder to get to the tracks they've always um reached out and helped me out gave me a helping hand and just helped me so much just throughout my journey and i thank them a lot i want to give a lot of credit to them the crimes family they've helped me a lot and man just everybody along the way o'neill obviously has helped me out now and it's, it's a lot of great people um, great inspiration in my corner and it's a lo- it's a long list but um yeah it's pretty much the main people definitely family god and um ebr ajax crew has been helping me a lot and ever and everyone that's um tagged along with this so yeah cool man who's your biggest competition at loretta's this year who are you my gonna be competition at loretta's you want me to be honest okay so i just had a great talk with kevin today he actually told the group something very very good he was telling us um, that you don't go to the races, and this is kind of how I have my approach, to really just win and beat the competition. You go to the races to put your best performance. So really, at the end of the day, if you put it like that, the biggest competition is myself at the end of the day. As long as I do good and I do my best, whatever result that brings, if it brings a first, if it brings a third, if it brings a hopefully you know within that you know that'll be great and I, re- I definitely feel like i'm um capable of doing that if i just put my best foot forward but not really focus on you know who's going to be there the other riders i'm just really focusing on myself and my craft to make sure i execute my um my marks my plans hit the ruts how i'm supposed to have the flow how i'm supposed to make sure i'm gentle with the bike stuff like that will bring me closer to a win or closer to beating any competitors out there than just focusing on, you know, the sole competitor or the track or just anything like that. Just really focusing on me and just doing the best that I can put my best foot forward. Dude, I love that answer, man. That's a great answer. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, cool, sir. Man. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it um, for me whenever my approach, whenever I go to the races, that's pretty much how I try to handle it. Also, although it's very hard, you know, Whenever you get to some races and you get in those high pressure situations where, you know, you feel like you're expected to win or have to do this, you kind of have to learn to block that out, especially if you want to be, you know, a champion or a top rider and just just do the best you can. At the end of the day, you're riding a dirt bike because you love riding dirt bikes and you love getting better. You didn't start riding dirt bikes because you just want to beat such and such and stuff like that. So just got to keep the same attitude. But, you know, in the more more i don't know i don't know what's the word i'm looking for just a more mature way just a more mature way nice one man nice so dude yes, you sir. grew up in you grew up in texas you're a texan yeah yes sir i grew up in baytown texas i'm about 20 minutes south of downtown houston and that's where i grew up so a nice soundtrack that i learned a lot at called athens mx um clint spears track and yeah learned a lot there that's where a lot of my boot camp was 
and yeah that's pretty much where i grew up and just not really that many tracks around i kind of had to drive a little bit you know for the bigger rougher tracks but you know i'm grateful i had just a few of them around to begin with so cool man cool so at um so k-dub's track is uh mississippi is that right yes sir it is in centerville mississippi it is about cool. an hour away from baton rouge louisiana yeah yeah and so are you there you're there just uh on your own like uh, or is or is or is dad still dad there or mum there as well or no i'm actually here on my own i drove up here in my van with my stuff and my actually my parents are coming tomorrow just to kind of visit i haven't seen my dad in three weeks he's been at work so he wants to come see me because he just flew in um to home so he's going to drive up it's about four hour drive so he's going to come up and um, see me tomorrow, see me ride a little bit and actually drop off my gear, my own new gear and stuff like that. So I'm super excited to see them tomorrow. But other than that, I kind of just stay up here and just get into the, you know, the the work zone and just focus on um, what's to come. You know, just focus on the daily progression and just getting ready for Loretta's, you know, it's Loretta's boot camp. It's a lot of, like I said, a great group of riders here. It can learn so much and got a lot of riders to push me and i can push a lot of other riders and it's just um never ending on the learning and out here so just trying to learn as much as i can I, yes i'm by myself but like i said i have a few roommates here with me they're in the actually in the other room i actually um, borrowed one of their rooms to do this because you know it's a great opportunity but yeah it's just pretty much me though cool man and you you had to drive up to a track in illinois for your regional was that, yes, sir. That seems, it seems like a long way. Was it, it? It is a long way, isn't it? Such a far way. It was 15 hours. So actually, the week before that, I had an area qualifier in Illinois. And it was actually, I only had like two days on the bike. So I did the area qualifier, came back home, rode the bike as much as I can, you know, tested suspension, and then went right back to Illinois for the regional. But... I went to Sunset Ridge, and that is actually one of my favorite tracks. I love that track. It was so good. My starts were a little a little bad, but um, the track was awesome. It had a very good flow to it. The dirt was good, and unfortunately, rain came okay, for sure. So um, in college, boy, I got to do all three of my motos. had really good um, three moto scores, and a lot of rain came. A lot of bad weather came at the end of the last day, and we didn't we didn't get to run our third moto of open pro because the rain was so bad. The weather was so bad. They wouldn't have enough time to finish it. So thankfully we were um, in a good enough spot to be able to just qualify straight through, even though we didn't have to, we didn't run the third moto. So yeah, very thankful for that, that I had the good two motos prior before that. And um, yeah, it was great. It was a great weekend. I felt like I really started gelling with the bike, the EBR Ajax Escobarna up there a lot um i got very comfortable on it, it was kind of like a switch kind of flipped and um yeah i got very comfortable and i just i'm loving the bike it's actually one of my favorite bikes i've ever ever ridden and i'm just very grateful to know that i can grow more on it with you know more testing more suspension we haven't even got that deep into it yet kind of just you know getting me going and getting ready for loretta's but um with my manager josh we have a lot of testing to do coming up um here soon um, we're going to be going home in like two or three weeks to do some testing and uh, stuff like that. So just knowing that the bike can get better and we can grow the bike is insane to me because I think the bike's perfect already. So, yeah, I just look forward to doing that and very grateful that we've made it through at Sunset Ridge and going to the ranch um, for my fourth time. And, yeah, just going to go do the best we can try to stay healthy. Cool, man. Cool. Are you looking forward to Supercross Futures next year? Yes, sir. I'm actually – that is jaw dropping to me. I'm, that is so exciting, you know, to be able to be a, a part of such an amazing program. Um, yeah, that's going to be so much fun. I'm definitely going to come back to Farm 14 after Loretta's and start working on my Supercross skills because Kevin Wyndham is a Supercross specialist, obviously. So just um, work on that and just I'm very excited to learn and just learn as much as I can. That's a whole new chapter. Um, definitely with Supercross, you know, indoors to outdoors and 
just very just very grateful that I have the opportunity to be able to race on such a platform like that and be able to have the opportunity to do the best that I can and really just get my name more and more out there and put up good results and yeah, just doing the best that I can. So I'm very excited. And the Arena Cross Championship. I'm so excited for that too. I've been watching so much Arena Cross lately and it looks so fun. Man, them guys get wild though. But I'm um yeah, I gotta be ready. And yeah, I'm gonna come up here and just do my training, do my homework, and just be as ready as I can. And we go into round one, see how it goes, and learn from that and just keep um building. That's the goal. Yeah, man, that arena cross series is awesome. Like, oh, the both oh, the yeah. series, they're, they're awesome. You know, it's great fun. <laughs> like, it's yeah, I, I, it's a yeah, uh, it's a it's like I don't I don't understand why it's not even more popular because it's like great racing yeah. all the time. Like, there's no boring there's no boring races. Like, it's just action. You know, <laughs> so, action. Yeah, well, oh yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, yeah, very yes, good, sir. man. Very good. So you haven't have you ridden much Supercross in the past? Um, I actually haven't ridden that much. I've rode some and I had so much fun on it. I had a blast. It's definitely at first, you kind of have like that mental block at first of like, oh, this is a big trip or these are some big rhythms and stuff like that. But um, once I just kind of said, I'm just going to go out there and do it and just whatever happens, happens. And then I noticed I had a really good flow on it and I started to learn it pretty quickly. So haven't been on it in a while. But, um, yeah, I look forward to just learning it because it was so fun last time I got on it. And we're just going to see how good we can get. You know, hopefully it takes us to exactly where I want to be. I'm just looking forward to that. Fantastic, man. Cool, yes, cool. Sir. Dude, um, towards the end of the show, man, I've just got a few uh, a few different questions and that sort of thing. And then I've got some <laughs> of them are uh, either ors and that sort of thing just to, uh, you know, learn a little bit more about you, man. Um, Yes, Dude, sir. when on, on race on race day, like, uh, are you listening to music or are you like chilling out, like it quiet, or what's what's your yeah. go there? So on race days, whenever it's time to get serious, I always, um, normally nine times out of ten, I get my headphones and I listen to a lot of gospel music. Gospel music really calms me. Like I said, my faith in God is really strong, and just um, it kind of just brings me closer to God, especially in that moment whenever I start to get any type of nerves or you know just very anxious i always listen to gospel music and i actually have this bracelet on my wrist that i read a lot it says be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be dismayed for your god is with you wherever you go so definitely hold that in my heart and yeah i really don't do too much don't have that big of a ritual i just really listen to gospel music and kind of just chill music not too much and um yeah, I just go out there, say a prayer before I go ride. Me and my family say a prayer. I say another prayer on the gate and then just go see what happens. Cool, man. Cool. What what other sort of music are you into? What what else do you get into? Okay, so I really, really there's this band that I really like called The Score. They make um very inspirational music and it's very it's very good. It's a really good band. They have a lot of great songs out i listen to them a lot avenge sevenfold they have some real good songs i like that song called set me free by avenge sevenfold and um fallout boy i really like fallout boy i really like you know upbeat um inspirational stuff that i can relate to you know nf is really good he's um really good like rapper but about inspirational stuff he doesn't do too much you know cussing or anything like that, which I think is really good. It just kind of gets me in the zone, and it's a lot of stuff that I can relate to. You know, it's like when you fall, get back up, or whenever you have challenges, you got to fight through them, and you got this, you've worked so hard. Stuff like that is the stuff I, I really like to listen to, and anything in that realm, really. I actually, I like country music. I like Morgan Wallen. I like Zach Bryan. And, yeah, I really, Treaty Oak Revival is real good. I'm kind of a mix. I'm kind of just out there, but. It's um just whatever I'm feeling, and that's really just something I can relate to at the end of the day. Is what I really like. Cool, man. Cool. Bit of a, what about bit, you? Of a bit of a mixture. Me, man. So, uh, I, my music taste varies wildly, man. Wildly, like, <laughs> um, uh, a little bit of everything except for uh, I hate sort of um, manufactured poppy sort of trashy yeah. pop music, like you know. <laughs> 
um i hate that sort of stuff but um any time where there's um talented musicians using instruments or just or yeah. using or using software because i love i love you know rap stuff and that as well um just where there's some real sort of talent um involved i uh i appreciate it but man my my um my uh biggest go-to is uh is sort of i guess uh classic rock which in my day it was just the rock but it's classic rock uh -huh. now and then particularly the particular genre out of that would be uh grunge music i'm a okay. uh i was your age in the early 90s man so grunge music like alice in chains and nirvana okay. and all that sort of stuff that's uh, that's very fairly and squarely in my uh in my era and my wheelhouse so that's that's my main sort of passion sound garden you know chris cornell all that sort of stuff so for sure yeah man that's uh that's definitely my go yeah absolutely okay, man. okay that cool good. man here's some either or questions towards the for the end of the show man so yes, um sir. weight weights or cardio me, I love cardio. I love cardio weights. I mean, I'm kind of just naturally a more built guy. Like, that's kind of my frame. But I just like cardio. I love going on runs. I love um, mountain biking with actually my manager, Josh. He, his mountain biking is insane. I try to keep up with him. It's very hard. But I love doing stuff like that. Hiking is very fun. My mom goes on a lot of walks. I go on walks with my mom if I'm in like a recovery state. Anything cardio wise, I just love weights. I don't know. They get a little boring to me, but I know at some point you have to do them. But for me, it's definitely a cardio. It's, I'm definitely a cardio guy. I love the cardio. Uh, I can't run much anymore, man. I mean, I I, I can, but I I um I constantly I'll get better and better at running, and then my dodgy ankle or or my more dodgy calf will blow up and i got to stop for a while and then i'll start <laughs> again and i'm back to square one and that but cycling is probably the one i really love man yeah because oh, i yeah. you can it's very low impact you know so but yeah i don't really like row i don't like rowing much even though i know it's good for me but yeah, cycling yeah. i love for sure that's great yeah that's great i actually yeah rowing it's fun but it gets a little like I don't know repetitive in a way but after you get like a hundred rows in you just kind of you know but i mean i still enjoy it better than weights to me <laughs> yeah man um when it's cheap meal time then are you going for like uh pizza or something like that or are you going for sweet stuff like ice cream i'm not really a sweet guy but when it comes to cheap stuff there's this place either chick-fil-a for one i love 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 chick-fil-a nice spicy chicken sandwich large fry and a nice sweet tea some chick-fil-a sauce oh that's that's perfect that's that's it right there that or any place that has a really good chicken sandwich um that is really good or even chicken parm i love chicken parm with some just really rigatoni like pasta on the side with like the good marinara and like some garlic bread like anything really i love chicken chicken base is really really good for me i just i love chicken that's my go-to especially on a cheat day but even on um strict days which is normally what i have to do and what i enjoy doing now it's kind of a lifestyle for me is grilled chicken and stuff like that and i i love grilled chicken i'll eat grilled chicken on a cheat day even even if i have one i don't really have too many i have some like maybe after a national um or we have a little break but normally it's kind of just a lifestyle to me on trying to eat you know healthy i just try to be the best version of myself that i can be so i don't really have too many but if i had to it would definitely be that chick-fil-a um spicy chicken sandwich for sure <laughs> <laughs> nice man nice nice um gaming or fishing okay that is a tough one okay because i just fished at the area qualifier in illinois not too long ago and i was hooked like literally hooked i had so much fun fishing i kind of got addicted so it used to be gaming for sure but now i'm gonna have to say i'm gonna have to say fishing i love fishing but if anything now definitely golf 
golf is like my favorite. I love golf. Like I can go golfing any moment of the day, any time of the day, no matter how hot, how cold, I'm going golfing for sure. I love golf and fishing is actually right up there with it now. I love fishing. It's very patient, but it's um it's a change of pace. You know, we're always riding and going, you know, so hard all day and stuff like that. So it's definitely a good change of pace, you know, to kind of bring you back to reality and just um stay in a smooth, calm mindset. So I really enjoy that stuff. It's very relaxing, especially if you're on the boat or on the dock with your friends or even on the the playing golf with your friends or anything like that. It's just very relaxing to me. So I'm definitely outdoorsy kind of guy. Nice. Um a uh, a Camaro or a Porsche? Porsche. Porsche. Most what about of, you? What my, about you? Most of the, I'm going to Camaro, man. I even oh, know which man. one. I mean, I even know which one, man. Yeah, yeah. Like which I, one? Uh, I, I, I I want a Bumblebee Camaro. So okay, they added okay. from, from like Transformers, yeah. I want the yellow and black Camaro, same <laughs> model from Transformers, man. A, I love that car, man. Yeah. So I mean, I I, I like I like uh, you know, like if if I can get an old restored, like if I could get like I think it's like about a '68 Camaro. I love those okay. as well, you know. But okay. uh, particularly if you're talking to getting something pretty new um they, those bumblebee ones which they're about 10 okay. years old now anyway but yeah they are uh, super cool it's funny yeah, man because well. you guys probably see a lot of camaros over there like camaros are really rare in australia like you see one it's like wow like because there's not many here. australia yeah man that is super cool that is super cool how is it up there i've always wanted to go to um australia how is it up there yeah man yeah it's good man it's good we're dude we're in the middle of winter so that's not good because i hate the cold but um <laughs> but yeah we're in the middle of winter but yeah otherwise man no it's good man it's good yeah so that's cool yeah. i want to come visit up there one day for sure and if i do or whenever i do come visit i'm definitely let you know i'll definitely you, let you know you, you gotta you do that man yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely man. absolutely uh dude um a beach holiday or a snow holiday you're giving me some very tough questions. You're giving me some very <laughs> tough questions. So, I'm going to have to go beach. I'm going to have to go beach because I really like being in the water. I love swimming. I love kayaking. I love tubing, wake surfing, all that type of stuff. I just feel like, but I really want to go on the um, snow holiday because I've never been snowboarding. I've never been skiing or anything like that so i definitely would love to try you know stuff like that so i just but as of right now it's gonna have to be beach because i haven't really done too much of um a snow holiday really but beach for me right now cool man cool yeah yeah i'm definitely beach instead of snow yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah yeah cool i reckon most most people that have asked they, they've said beach i think there's yeah there's been a couple there's been a few that said they like both but i think just about everyone's gone beach the other questions is pretty good mixture pretty good mixture of uh answers though yeah yeah cool man all right Sorry. thank you very much man i'll uh i'll let you go get back to uh you know i suppose you you got to get something to eat now and that sort of thing you've been uh trained or you've probably already eaten actually haven't you because you're in central time so you're getting late in the day yeah Yes, so, sir. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on. This has been such a great time. I greatly appreciate the opportunity. It was very nice meeting you as well. I love that accent. I love where you live. I got to come up there one of these days. And, um, yeah, I just greatly appreciate it. And I'll definitely keep you updated on, um, you know, what's to come for sure like that. You're a very cool individual, very cool guy. Yeah, look forward to um, talking to you sometime in the future for sure. Thank you, man. It's been a pleasure talking to you too, man. And uh, best of luck at Loretta's. I'll be certainly uh, looking out for the uh, results and hopefully get to uh, watch a few motos. It's it's hard hard to uh, get to watch all the uh, watch Loretta's motos because they're all on in the middle of the night for us. So um, okay. you know it, it's uh, it's hard to watch with the uh, you know sort of day races day races uh, on uh, where you sort of get to that side of America with the time difference and that there, they're like sort of middle of the night. So the live stream's hard to catch and that sort of thing, but I try and catch a few and, and best of luck there, man. Yeah. Go and uh, 
down and get another championship, man. Good luck. Thank you so much, sir. Seriously, thank you so much. It means a lot. I'm definitely going to do my best, like I said, going to it um, to the race with that type of mindset and approach that I told you about earlier and just look forward to having fun and enjoying probably my last year at Loretta's. And, um, yeah, just going to do the best we can, boss, man. Thank you, man. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. You as well, boss. Cheers, man. Bye.